start. So coming into your comfortable Sukhasana, easy pose, legs crossed, perhaps you're sitting on a block or a folded blanket just underneath your sit bones so that your spine lengthens. It allows your hips to open, knees to lower slightly. Lift your shoulders up towards your ears and then roll them down and away. So that helps to lengthen your neck, relax your shoulders. Palms can be face up or face down on your knees. You can bring your fingers into Gyan Mudra, which is thumb and index touching, or into our Vrun Mudra or Buddhi Mudra with ring and thumb, uh, little and thumb touching. So yogi's choice which mudra they take. Hands on your knees. I'm having palms face up for sense of energy and uplifting. You can have palms face down if you want more grounding and rooting. Check in with your emotions, see what sense of feeling you want to create today. So lifting your crown to the sky, chin parallel. Let's take a few moments to arrive on our mat, arrive into our bodies, into our practice. Begin to become aware of your breath. Notice the quality of your breath. The pace of your breath. Is it slow and steady? Or does it feel a little short and fast and irregular? Just notice without judgment, without attempting to change it. Notice the depth of your breath, the place from which you breathe. Do you feel that you're breathing from up here in your upper chest? Perhaps a little lower in your ribs or maybe even lower from your abdomen. Just notice the place from which you breathe, the depth, the length of your breath. And as you observe your breath and bear witness to your breath, naturally and with effortless ease, you will notice how the breath changes in response to this awareness. It begins to slow down, deepen, lengthen. Let's take three full breaths in through your nose and then washing them out through open mouth. Inhale fully. Exhale completely through open mouth. Inhaling. Washing the breath out. Inhaling through your nose. Cleansing breath out. Return to your natural rhythm. Bringing your palms together in Namaskar at your heart center, thumbs pressing against your sternum. Let's open our practice with three arms, the primordial vibration of the universe. Inhale fully, exhale completely to prepare. Attach meaning and significance to each on, perhaps one for your community, another for your loved ones, family and friends, and one for yourself. Inhale to prepare. Oh. Inhale. Oh. Inhale. Oh. Hands to your eyebrow center. Namaste. Namaste and welcome everyone. Welcome to your practice today with Kelly. Very delighted to see you all on a Saturday morning. Um, 
I know we have some new uh, members of the community, so welcome everyone. Um, today's practice is going to connect with the element of water. We did this on Wednesday, for those of you who joined us then. And we're going to continue and develop our practice a little further in relation to um, element. So I wanted to give you a little introduction. We talked about how there are five great elements, pancha mahabhutas, pancha mahabhutas, five great elements. We have fire, that's your connected to your thumb, air, so that's the atmosphere in which we live, connected to your index, ether or space, the atmosphere beyond the earth is connected to your middle finger, earth is connected to your ring, and water to your little finger. So water, little finger, earth, ring, ether, space, middle, air, index, fire, thumb. So when we create mudras or hasta mudras with our hands, those hand seals or gestures to contain, direct the flow of energy to activate different elements of our practice, this is why when we connect different fingers, we are stimulating and activating different elements. We are made up of all those five elements. The earth is made up of those five elements. Everything in the universe is made up of those five elements. So we are all one, the smallest atom to the greatest atom and the greatest whole part. Um, um, so we'll go through our mudras, we'll go through our breath, um, Again, our mudra today is going to be the buddhi mudra, so little and thumb touching. We're also going to introduce the lotus mudra. So I'm going to come a little bit closer so you can see how that looks. And we're going to do a prayer with our lotus mudra, padma mudra. So bringing your hands together in prayer, we open up the middle three fingers with that little finger and thumb still touching, creating a flower shape. This is lotus mudra, padma mudra. So we can have this at our heart open, or above our crowns open. Uh, um, anahat chakra, sahasara chakra. Well, to do a prayer wheel, I'll show you how we're going to do it. I'll show it first and then we'll talk through it. So my hands are in prayer, namaste here. I begin to open my fingers to, down towards the earth and my palms towards my body, creating this yoni mudra. And then I flow with my fingers towards my heart so the backs of my hands come together. As I do that, I lift my hands in front of my face and then I fan my hands so that my palms are facing me, the backs of my hands are facing you. And then my little finger and my thumb come together, creating the mudra. And then at my crown, I'll do the same thing. So you'll see that you're going to move up and down. And this is tricky, so practice it. Palms together, open into flower, fingers down, backs of hands, fan like a book. So you're opening and fanning like a book here, and so on. And as you do that, you can bring your hands into it. It's tricky, I know, and you'll get used to it. So just play with it. <clears throat> it's hard to explain because it also, you're folding your hands in and palms together and away from each other as you rotate at your wrists to move up and to move down. Have fun with it. Right, let's get started. I'm dedicating my practice today. Um, to someone who's passed away, um, Maha, um, Mama B. Um, so I will chant a mantra for her at the end of our practice. And when I do that, I invite you to think of someone that you have lost that you would like to dedicate your practice to. Um, so place them in the, the palm of your hand, in the heart of your flower your lotus mudra and when you gaze down towards your lotus perhaps you think of them or 
visualize them and remember them in some way and offer them light and love on their journey. Grounding down through your sit bones, lengthening through your spine, crown lifted, fingertips on the earth. Let's open our practice here. Leaving your right fingertips on the earth, inhale, reach up with your right hand up towards the sky, your left hand towards the sky, and exhale over to the right. Breathe deeply into your side body here. Inhale through center. Let's bring our left fingertips down, right fingertips up and over. So let's flow from side to side here with your breath, inhaling to rise up, exhaling to come into this lateral stretch. Twice more to both sides. And create a sense of extension in your side body. We're creating a flowing practice today. So there'll be lots of circular movements. The element of water flows, so jar flows. You can see it whirling, rippling, cascading. So we're going to create lots of movement. Now, this time, as you bring your right hand to the earth, with your left fingertips, you're going to start reaching forward and sweeping your arms around and back down towards the earth. Again, sweeping forward, back. And around. So now you're going to create great big circles. So this is like Sufi circles with your hands. It doesn't really matter which way your hands flow. You're creating a movement and then you can reverse the movement. So it might look like mine, it might look slightly different. Let's go the other way now. Just one more. So let's reverse the movements. So you can see I can bring both my arms into it. So this is spinal flexion. So what we're doing is creating movement through the length of our spine, starting at our root chakra, working our way up through our chakras along the central channel here. One more time, whichever way you're going. And then back to stillness. Let's bring the soles of our feet together in butterfly by the Kanasana. Knees are wide, so create a generous diamond here. Perhaps you create a lotus mudra at your heart. Take a breath here. Really relax your knees. So allow your knees to feel heavy. That will allow the hips to open slightly. Lengthen through your crown, lengthen through your spine. Now you can be happy and stay here. Balakanasana, or you can fold forward. So if you're folding forward, reach with your hands towards your ankles or your feet, toes, and then lengthen your crown towards me. Take your elbows to the outside of your shins, and then when you've reached as far forward as you can with your crown, and then you'll feel some tension here in your hip flexors, then relax your head. So that your crown relaxes, your shoulders and neck soften towards your feet. Breathe into your hips here. Breathe into the areas of your body where you feel tightness, tension, compression. So use your practice guiding your breath into the parts of your body to help soften, surrender, release, let go. The quality of water is cleansing purifying, softening, yielding. We will come to the, the stronger, more powerful aspect of the element throughout our practice. One more breath here in butterfly. And then release your hands to the earth and walk gradually back towards the center, rising as you do. With helping hands, let's bring your knees together. Place them on the earth for a moment, fingertips either side of you, and then windshield wiper your knees one way, then the other. So see if you can take them as low towards the earth as you can. I'm coming off my block here. Perhaps they come all the way to the earth. As you can see, I'm opening up my heart space as well when my knees come towards the earth. One, small here. 
And then back to center. Let's swing our legs around and come onto all fours into neutral spine here, tabletop. So find your position here. Remember, if you need to pad your knees, reach for your blanket and fold it up and place it underneath your knees. So yogi's choice. So I have a cork mat, which is very well padded, so I don't need a blanket. So I protect my knees by using a thicker mat. Um, but if you have a thinner mat, I advise you use a blanket. Spread your fingers wide. Press into the pads of your fingers, into the knuckles of your palms. Lengthen your crown towards the top of your mat. Tailbone towards the back. Untuck your toes here. Let's take a moment here. We're going to do what we did the other day. We're going to sit back towards our heels with our sit bones, coming into child's pose. From child's pose, we're going to flow forward, coming into cobra. Ujjengasan. Pressing through our hands, back into table. As we flow with our sit bones towards our heels, Crown and eyebrow center towards the earth, child's pose, balasana. Inhaling to rise, reaching with your crown towards the front of your mat, coming with your abdomen to the earth, cobra, pressing through your hands. Back into child's pose. Let's do this twice more. So flow with your breath. You can go quite fast if you feel that you need more energy, or you can go quite slow. So, we'll be child's pose, cobra, table, child's pose, malasana, bhujangasana. So, this is called cobra flow. And then when you're ready, let's come back to neutral tables, taking a moment here. Let's circle our hips one way, three times. Take big circles here. And then let's go reverse that motion. So you fortunately don't have to do this on camera. I can't see you, but you can see me. So don't be worried about how you look here. Just relax. Back to neutral. Now turn and look towards your left hip, creating a C shape with your spine. Inhale back to center. Let's look over towards our right hip. Take a full breath. So connect with your breath. Your breath is the bridge between your mind and your body, helping you to focus on your breath, maintains a connection, physical connection. Let's come into mountain parvakasan. So spread your fingers wide. You can either reach forward slightly with your hands, tuck your toes, engage through your core by drawing your navel towards your spine, and then inhale, lift your knees and hover here for a moment. We're going to hover here, engaging. This is tiger, sadhulasan, hovering tiger. And then begin to straighten through your legs, reaching your tailbone back, ears come between your arms. Turn the insides of your elbows so that they face forward. Press into your finger pads. Now you might be comfortable here, or this might be really challenging if you're, if you're new to yoga practice. Pedal your feet. Remember, you can always come back into table at any point to rest. Rotate your wrists one way and the other in order to give them a little break. So if you're here in mountain, part of the tassan, let's pedal your feet. One heel comes towards the earth as the other knee comes in towards your body. Cycling and pedaling here. Keep rotating. Keep swaying your hips, pedaling here. And from here, we did this the other day, as we inhale, come into stillness, and inhaling, come forward with your shoulders above your wrists. 
coming into plank. You can be in half plank. So Phalakasan, here's plank. One breath here. And then we're going to lower by bending our elbows in towards us, down to the earth, Chaturanga. Untuck your toes. Inhale, rise up. Up dog, Urdhva Mukha Shavanasana. Now two variations here. We're either doing it mountain, Dandasan, Chantaranga, and up dog, or we're in table, half plank, cobra. Table, half plank, and then cobra. So yogi's choice, find where you are. So I'll do a demonstration with mountain, shifting your weight forward, plank. You can lower with your knees or lower all the way down. Inhale, up dog. Now I'll demo with table. Table, shift your weight forward, half plank, lower into cobra. Inhale, back into table. So this rotation, this chakra, this wheel from mountain to plank to up dog. From table to half plank, cobra. I know you're all working hard. I can see that some of you are working hard. Those of you who've got your videos on. If you haven't got your video on, you might be sitting and having a cup of tea and watching us do it. Doesn't matter. At least you're here with us in our community. Table, so or mountain, plank or half plank, lower to the earth, cobra. Or up dog. Exhale, table or mountain. One more time, wherever you are. And then let's all rest and meet in child's pose. Eyebrows center to the earth. Or place your palms on top of each other. Eyebrows center, rest on the backs of your hands. Let's just take a moment here in child's pose, Balasana. Let's take three Brahmri breaths, honeybee breath, that buzzing breath, very restful and soothing. Inhaling through your nose. As you exhale, keep your lips softly parted, making a buzzing or humming sound, like the sound of a honeybee. Inhale fully. Exhale, honeybee. Mm. vibration in your head. Two more like this. Inhale together. Exhale Brahmri. Mm. Inhale together. Exhale Brahmri. Mm. Allow the vibration to wash over you. On your inhale, lift your gaze. Walk your hands in front of you, back into table. From table now, we're gonna step forward with our right leg. Bring it in front of you so it's between your hands. Low lunge here, Vajanasana. Have your left knee on the earth, can be padded or not. Shine your heart, lift your gaze for a moment here. As you exhale, let's take our sit bone back towards our heel. Roll onto the heel of your extended leg, your right leg. Half um, Adha Hanumanasana, half Hanuman pose, or half splits. I'm struggling to find the English words sometimes for these poses. Adha Hanumanasana. Exhale, roll through your right foot. Back into low lunge, Ajaniyasana. Inhaling, we're going to go rocking backwards and forwards like this for three breaths more. So using your inhale to come forward, perhaps your exhale to rock back. Keep those toes pointed up towards the ceiling when you come back. So your hands can be on the earth 
You can have your hands on your blocks or books or your footstool. And let's peel back into low lunge here for a moment. Take a breath here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our body so that we fold in our left leg. And you'll see what I've created here. So my right foot stays planted on the earth, my right knee is bent. So I've gone from here, low lunge, turned my heart towards you. And as I do that, I swing my left foot behind me. And then I rise up here. So I've created what looks like the letter H. Let's take a moment here. Now bring your hands together at your heart center. Open up that right knee towards the back of the room so that you can feel it here on the inside of your thigh. Open up your lotus flower. Take a moment here. We're going to do a one prayer wheel with our hand, palms together, fingers go down, yoni mudra, back of hands, open like a book in front of your face, flower rises up, prayer hands, Yoni Mudra, fingers point down, backs of hands. Look at your heart, lotus. One more breath. Let's turn our bodies back. Lift that left leg and step back long with your right leg. You might want to pedal your feet here. And then let's come back onto our knees. Going the other way, let's step forward with our left foot between our hands right knee on the earth, pad it if you need. Shine your heart, lift your gaze. Anjanyasana, low lunge. Exhaling, let's take our sit bones back towards our heel, roll through our left foot so we come onto the heel, toes pointing up. Ardha Hanumanasana, half split. Inhaling, roll through your left foot, come back into low lunge. Exhaling, roll through to the heel of your left foot, sit bones back towards your hip, right foot. Let's go three more times here. Your movements can be slow and steady. So we've been working today with the element of water, jar. It's connected to the second chakra, Swadhisthan chakra, which is at our pelvic area. So many of our poses today, our asanas are correct, connected to balancing this second chakra. Wherever you are, let's come back into low lunge. And I'm going to turn so that I'm facing you so you can see what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn my heart towards you as I do that, swing my right leg behind. So I'll create this H shape with my legs. Inhale, hands to hips. Have your left knee turning back so that you're really opening up through the front here. Hands on your hips can stay here or you can come into lotus at your heart. Let's take a moment here. Really connect through the sole of that left foot. Lift your crown. Again, let's work through our prayer wheel. Hands come together. Fingers point down, creating yoni mudra, this shape, V shape, diamond shape, backs of hands. Open the book, the petals in front of your face. Thumb comes together, lotus to your crown. Prayer hands, yoni mudra, backs of hands, lotus flower at your heart. Take a breath here. And then we're going to turn, bring our hands back to the earth. Lift our right knee and step back along with our left foot and pedal here to create a little bit of movement, a little bit of flow. And then let's bring your knees to the earth. We're going to rise here. So we'll do this through um, mountain here. Take a moment. And then let's walk your hands back towards your feet. So not forward. So normally we walk our feet towards our hands. Today we're going to walk our hands back towards our feet. Bend deeply into your knees. Take a moment here in forward fold. 
relax your head neck and shoulders and then as you inhale engage your core and you begin to unpeel your spine to rise up into standing mountain tadasan your head and shoulders are the last to come up and then when you've come to standing so i'm just facing you but you can stay where you are at the back of your mat ground down through your feet by lifting your toes and then placing them on the earth one by one bend into your knees really connect with the air engage your pelvic area here so this is where our mula band and udiana band is so we're going to squeeze the center of our pelvis knit in our ribs and then inhale lift our shoulders roll them back take a moment here one breath here and then inhale to reach up exhale prayer wheel to the hand so we're going to do this one more time reaching up lotus to the crown backs of hands lotus to the heart so do this prayer wheel so there you go so that's what it looks like when it's here but you're moving your arms through to rise up then take a moment here you're here at your mat so you're at the bottom of your mat you have the whole mat in front of you let's take a moment inhale reach up exhale forward fold take a moment here and then slide your hands away come onto your knees and we're coming back onto the earth crown resting on the eye, eyebrow center resting on the earth let's reach back with your arms palms face down we're going to inhale and lift our right leg off the earth exhale lower inhale lift our left leg off the earth exhale lower as you're doing this press your pelvis in the middle of your body into the earth inhale let's lift both legs off the earth lift both arms off the earth locust pose salabasan reach through your fingers one breath here exhaling lower your legs lower your hands bring your hands either side of your shoulders in front of your shoulders slightly pressing into the earth inhale rise up into cobra tuck your elbows into the side exhale lower now we're going to add a variation to our, our cobra i'm um, just shifting slightly so you can see take your hands wider than your mat so your hands will probably come onto the earth and lift your palms so that you're cup pressing into your fingers so you're gonna have your fingers on the earth the pads of your fingers and lift your elbows so that you create a uh, shape like this with your elbows I'm going to turn to you so you can see so you're creating this sort of shape with your elbows with your abdomen on the earth so your fingers are connected to the earth like this spider so hands now we're going to rise into cobra from here have your feet as wide as your mat maybe or your big toes touching yogi's choice depends on how much space you need for your lower back inhaling press into your fingers lift your crown lift your gaze lift your heart have your elbows out to the side so you're creating this um L shape with your hands you're on your fingers here this is hard work exhale lower if that feels too difficult you can have your palms on the earth and still have your elbows lifted so it becomes more like a push-up then that might be even harder though try it out see what feels good for you let's do that twice more eyebrow center on the earth have your hands cupped finger pads connected with the earth elbows lifted inhale rise up with your crown your gaze your heart exhale lower pushing into the earth with your pelvic area with your abdomen inhale rise exhale lower and let's release your arms so you might want to place them hands underneath your eyebrow center your agna chakra or have your arms alongside your body palms face up left ear on the earth maybe or right ear on the earth let's just take a moment of rest take a full breath in i invite you to connect with brahmari breath honeybee breath 
Inhale fully. Exhale, Brahmri, humming or buzzing sound through the gently closed lips. Mm. One more breath. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, Brahmri, or a natural breath. Mm. Turn your gaze back to center. Press into your hands. Lift into table. Take a moment here. We're going to step forward with our right foot between our hands here. Lift, tuck your left toes and lift your left knee. Here you are in low lunge with your knee lifted. Now, if lifting your knee feels too difficult, you can keep your knee connected on the earth. Just try it and see how you feel and how you get on. When you're here, we're going to rock very gently by straightening through our right leg, walking our hands back, and lifting our toes of our right foot off the earth. So we rock onto our right heel. So can you see that I've created a pyramid shape? Bend, you can roll through your foot, bend into your knee, back into low lunge here. Inhaling, I take a straighten through my right leg and then I lift my right toes off the earth. So I come onto the heel. So if your fingers are on the earth, great. Otherwise, use blocks to bring the earth closer to you. Or, as you know, I often use my footstool. Very comfortable for watching TV on in the evenings, but also great for supporting me. So you can see that I can place my hands on my footstool. So come into your variation that suits you. Using your breath. I know you've been doing this for a while now, a bit longer than me, because I had a mini break going to get my footstool. You want to feel an extension down the back of your right leg. And then let's stop wherever you are. Take a moment here. And then let's step back with our right foot back into mountain. Pedal your feet. And we're going to come and step forward with our left leg this time. Coming into a low lunge with our right knee lifted this time, plant your left foot. And again, as you inhale, begin to straighten through your left leg, lift your left toes and rock onto your left heel. Your fingertips can be on the earth, on your blocks or your footstool. And then let's roll backwards and forwards here. Inhaling to come up into pyramid variation. Exhaling, low lunge. So let's do this a few times. Use your breath. Be slow and steady here. And really flex those lifted toes up towards the sky. That will create extension and length at the back of your leg. One more time, wherever you are. And then plant your hands and step back into mountain. Pedal your feet. Take a moment here. Walk your hands back towards your body. Inhale to rise up into standing mountain to dasan. Hands at your heart center, opening to Lotus Mudra. And then let's do our prayer wheel here, reaching up above our crown, back towards our heart. So creativity, creation, fertility of ideas and inspiration all sit with our second chakra and the element of water. Let's take one moment here. Now I'm going to invite you to turn and face the camera and face me, your device, wherever you are, so that you're standing sideways here. We're going to go both ways, so it doesn't matter which end of your mat you're at. I'm at the left of my mat. Um, if you want to be on exactly the same uh, location, but we can, we're going to go both ways. So hands at your heart, inhale, reach up, take hold of your left wrist and exhale over to the right, half um, Chandrasan, moon pose. Inhale back to center, exhale, hands to your heart. Now take your hands and place the heels of your hands on your, just above your hips here at the back, so where that bony area is at your sacrum. 
so that your fingers are pointing down. Draw your knee, elbows in towards each other, shoulder blades come together, heart opens. A very gentle heart opener. And if you want to turn this into a back bend, lift your gaze, lift your chin, and slightly move your hips and pelvis forward. Keep drawing your shoulder blades and elbows together. One breath here. So I will go sideways so you can see how I look. One more here. And then slowly with care, because with back bends we move with care as we transition out of them. Bring your chin parallel to the earth, release your hands. Let's step across our mat into star pose. Open your arms out wide. Have your toes pointing forward. We're going to move here. So bending into our elbows, turn our knees out. As we do that, we turn our toes out. Goddess pose. Devi asana or utkata kunasana. Inhale, straighten, reach your arms up. Exhale, let's bend into our knees, bend into our elbows. One more time. Inhale to reach up with your arms. Exhale, let's come down. Now we're going to come into Garudasana. So bring your arms parallel to each other. Let's take our left arm under our right arm. Backs of hands together or wrap your fingers round onto your palm. Lift your elbows. Now you can stay here with your feet firmly planted on the earth. Or you are invited to lift your heels so that you bring the weight to bear on the balls of your feet. One breath here, so you're here with your heels firmly planted or heels lifted. One more breath. Exhale, lower your heels. Inhale, open your arms. Let's point, turn our right toes to the top of the mat. Let's hinge with our right arm towards the front of our mat there. So you're hinging here. And then have a gentle bend in this knee, so don't lock it out, keep a little bend. Exhale, let's bring our right fingertips down towards our right leg or to the earth. Our right, our left arm is either in the air or resting on our hip. Yogi's choice, Trikonasana. One breath more here. Gaze down towards the earth. Now from here, we're going to move into pyramid pose. So let's bring this arm up here, down. So this is our left arm down towards the earth. And as we do that, we perhaps shuffle our left, our right foot to the outer edge of the mat. Maybe we step with our left, right foot. So we create a broader pyramid. So by stepping your feet out, you create a broader pyramid for your, broad, broader base for your pyramid. Your left toes are slightly angled angles at a 45 degree angle. Here you are in a forward fold over your right leg. Relax your head, neck and shoulders. Allow your upper body to be soft and surrendering. Your lower body to be strong, giving you a steady, stable base. One breath here, bring your hands to your heart in prayer. Take your crown to reach forward, tailbone to reach back, halfway lift. So we're here with a forward fold. Inhale, hands to heart, crown reaching forward, tailbone reaching back, halfway lift. From here, we're going to rise up into standing pyramid. So bend slightly into your right knee and rise up. So first you come with your gaze parallel to the horizon. And then we're going to lift our gaze slightly coming into a gentle back bend, hands at your heart. So check how the back of your neck feels here. So if your neck feels very constricted and your head feels very heavy, then stay more upright. You want to create, keep some space here at the back of your neck. Press your palms together at your heart. Exhale, bend into your left, right knee, come back, halfway lift. Release your hands to the earth. Let's rotate onto the ball of our left foot so that we come into low lunge here. Here you are in low lunge. From low lunge, 
we're going to come into dragon so bring your right hand to the inside of your right foot shuffle your right foot out both palms on the earth your knee can be lifted here or you can bring it to the earth yogi's choice your hands can be on the earth or again you can have your footstool or block handy here you are in dragon so we're in high flying dragon so your gaze is up and ahead of you you also have the option here of coming onto your forearms Again, forearms can be on the earth or the earth can be lifted by the use of blocks. So if we can't reach the earth, we bring up the earth to reach us. We meet wherever we are. One more breath here in dragon. Just a moment more. And then if you're on your forearms, inhale to rise up back onto your hands. From here, we're going to shuffle into Pigeon Kaputasan. So take your right hand off the mat and take it to the outside of your right leg. Begin to walk your right foot towards the middle of the mat. Now, supporting yourself in your hands, you take your right foot all the way across your mat. So you come onto the outer edge of your foot and then lower onto your right hip. So your left leg can be either bent at an angle here or reaching back behind you. So we're just sitting here on our left hip and left sit down for a moment. We're only here for a moment because we're going to settle here. And then we're going to shift and roll onto the front of our leg that's behind us, our left leg. So now your sit bone of your right hip is going to be, have lifted. You can place a block or your cushion underneath your sit bone here. So if you need to reach for your cushion, get your cushion. So you're on the front of your left leg. You're sitting on your right hip and you're going to angle that right foot either close to your left hip or away from your left hip have a gaze at the camera if you're not sure so here we are in high kaputasan take a moment here your hands can be planted on the earth with your palms or you can be on your fingertips as you exhale reach forward with your crown and then bring your hands underneath your eyebrow center, sleeping pigeon or sleeping swan. So your left leg is reaching behind you. Your right leg is folded in front of you with your right heel either near your left hip or your right heel a little bit away from your hip. So this foot can be, might be there. That might feel too intense, it might be a bit closer. One more breath here in Pigeon Kaputasan. Inhale, lift your gaze, lift your heart, come onto your hands, tuck your left toes and rise back into plank, pedal your feet here, and then come into mountain. Take a moment here. And we're going to go the other way. So let's step forward, this time with our right, our left foot between our hands. So I'm going to turn around so I can show you. So now the other foot steps forward in front of you. Here you are in low lunge. Walk that left, right foot in slightly, create a pyramid shape. We're going to rock back onto our heel so we're rocking on our left foot so low lunge back into pyramid low lunge so we're just rolling through our left foot straightening and bending that left leg as we do this so again your fingers can be on the earth or on blocks 
One more, wherever you are. And then here we are in low lunge. We're going to come and step forward slightly with our left foot and rise into Trikonasana Triangle Pose from here. So your left hand is either on the earth or on the inside of your left leg. Your right hand is reaching up or on your hip. Let's take a moment here. So we're now reversing our journey and we're revisiting the poses on this side. One more breath here in Trikonasana. Connecting with the sense of power, the powerful element of water, the river torrents, the tidal waves, the crashing waterfalls. The so water is not just yielding and soft, it is powerful and transformative. One breath more here. Let's bring our right hand towards the earth. I'm going to come back into our pyramid shape. So remember, create a broad base for your pyramid by shuffling your feet out towards the outer edges of your mat. So your right toes are at a 45 degree angle, your front forward leg, your toes are pointing forward. Relax your head, neck and shoulders in a forward fold here over this left leg. And then when you're ready, let's bring your hands together at your heart center, halfway left crown, reaching forward, tailbone, reaching back. Have a soft bend in that left knee. And then when you're ready, press through your feet, engage your core, rising with your crown, your gaze, your heart into a standing pyramid. Exhaling into a Reverse pyramid, taking your gaze up towards the sky. Keep maintaining a connection through the midline here. And avoid cricking the back of your neck. Bam jalalei nama. I go with the flow. I am created. One more breath. And then let's come back into halfway lift. Keep that bend in that forward leg. Bend if you need. And then let's bring our fingers to the earth. Let's rotate and come onto the ball of our right foot here. Low lunge for a moment. And let's bring our left hand to the inside of our left foot. Shuffle that left foot out. We're coming into dragon, your variation. So knee lifted or knee on the earth. On your hands in high dragon or on your forearms in low dragon. Again, your variation. So again, use your props. So I'm going to come here with this variation with my forearms on the, on the footstool and I'm lifted. Uh, let's try again. So I automatically accidentally disconnected us to rotate the camera view. So I'm still in Dragon. Here we go. Hopefully I'm back for everyone. Take a moment here. And then let's rise up from wherever we are in our variation of Dragon. We're going to move into Pigeon here. So lift your left hand, take it to the outside of your left foot. Begin to shuffle your left foot across your mat. Now keep supporting yourself with your hands and then lower very gently onto your left hip. So you'll rotate a little bit here. Now your left foot can be parallel to the front edge of the mat or it can be more angled in towards your right hip. When you've got the right angle for your leg, 
then roll onto the front of your right leg. So have a gaze at me if you want. This is pigeon here. Remember? <laughs> Remember, you can use your cushion here underneath your hip. Now you can stay here in high pigeon or you can fold forward and come to the earth, resting your eyebrows center on the backs of your hands. We'll be here in pigeon for a couple of breaths. One more full breath here. Then inhale to rise up, shining with your heart forward, hands on the earth, tuck your right toes, lift yourself back into plank for a moment, pedal your legs here, coming into mountain just for a moment. And then let's walk your hands back towards your feet, wherever you are. Inhale to uncurl your spine, rise up in standing mountain. Hands at your heart uh, in Lotus Mudra. Let's do one prayer wheel here. Hands back to your heart. Let's reach up, take hold of our right wrist, and then let's bend over to the left this time. Inhale, center. As you exhale, fold forward down towards the earth. Come onto your knees, come onto your sit bones, and let's turn so that you're sitting sideways and you have the length of your mat in front of you. Take a moment here. And for our pose today for Shavasan, we're going to use our cushions or pillows, whatever you have handy, or your folded blankets. And as we roll down towards the earth, we're going to come into a supported bridge pose. So place your cushion underneath your sacrum. So you could have a couple of cushions here. There you go. So take a look at me. My feet are planted on the earth. My knees are bent. I lift my hips and pelvis to place the cushion underneath my back. And then I relax and soften into my cushion, my blanket, my pillow. My arms are alongside my body, slightly away, palms face up, little finger and thumb touching in buddhi mudra, eyes closed. Vam jalale nama. Vam jalale nama. I go with the flow. I trust it to take me where I need. Take a full breath here, eyes closed. You also have the option of bringing your knees in towards each other so your feet are slightly further apart. This is called constructive rest. Your knees apart, yogini's choice, yogini's choice. Let's take full breaths in through our nose, washing them out through your mouth. <sighs> Two more. In through your nose, wash it out through your mouth. So I invite you to come to this pose at any time during your day. This is very restful and supportive. Now here we're really balancing our Swadhisthan chakra here at the pelvic area. We're supporting it, enabling it to rest, nourishing and hydrating our kidneys. One more breath. 
And then I'm going to invite you to bring your knees in towards your heart and have a little hug here so that your lower back is still supported by your cushion and your pillow. Perhaps you hug yourself in. This is upon asana, really squeezing in. And then let's release our feet back to the earth. Remove your cushions and roll over onto one side or the other. And rest there for a moment in sleeping Krishna. Your head can be supported by your arm, using it as a pillow. And then when you're ready, pressing into your hand, inhale to rise up. You're going to come into our sukhasa and comfortable seat. Again, you can use your cushion here to sit on, crossing your legs, lifting your crown. Let's do our Varun or Buddhi Mudra little finger and thumb touching. And today for our mantra, I'm going to dedicate our mantra to Mama B. I invite you to dedicate the mantra to your loved ones who have passed to watch over them in their journey. This is called the Jyoti Mantra, the mantra of illumination. I'll translate it first and then we'll do, I'll do three rounds. You can just softly listen and then we'll do a recording and I'll send it out to you. From ignorance, lead me to truth. From darkness, lead me to light. From death, lead me to immortality. Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrichoma Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Marichoma Amritangamaya Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Marichoma Amritangamaya Om Bring your hands into Padma Mudra at your heart, Lotus. Gaze down into the cupped hands, thinking of your loved ones. Closing our practice with one arm and three shantis. Shanti means peace. Inhale fully. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Hands together at your eyebrow center. Then you're